Good morning. Hi, Ed. Hey. Hello, everyone. Hello. Apologies for last week, guys. There was some confusion. I was on an airplane and Frederick was ill and yeah. Nikolai on public holidays. <laughs> so uh, a lot of consequences. Yeah, no, it, 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 it was the confluence of events. So. Sorry, I will mute and close the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Let's see. Yeah, I've been, was traveling to a somebody thing internally last week. And so got very, very, very distracted. But I think back to moving things forward again. Cool, does someone want to, I guess I can share the- um... Hi. Cool, hey, welcome. Good morning, Nikolai. Morning. I'm just having my first cup of coffee, so I'm a little bit, still a little bit out of it. I'm a bit jealous because it's almost a night for us and having <laughs> a coffee on night, it's not very good. <laughs> no, no, I usually, I, I don't have coffee usually after 2 p.m. my time, because um, otherwise it doesn't go well. So, all right, let me see if I can share the issue in PR tracking. Google Chrome issue and PR tracking. There we go. Hi, Frederick. Morning, Frederick. Hello. I was I was just commenting that um, I am just having my first cup of coffee, but it's even earlier for you. So. Yeah. I I was going to ask if you can take a, if you could take the meeting today, because I had a 2 a.m. emergency that required me to drive, and everything's oh. okay, um, because I drove, <laughs> but um, yeah, but I was, I was going to, I was going to look at dropping out for, for today. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll figure, definitely figure something out. I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of bragging. Um, <clears throat> cool. So... Going through the, the board, uh, starting with reviews in progress. Um, so we've got um, mechanism SRV stick should return zero value for parameter instead of error. Um, oh, it's related to GRPC uh, convention about uh, return parameters. Okay. Could you say more? I'm not quite following. Oh, uh, can you open the my PR related to WireGuard remote mechanism uh, into a B repo? Sure. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Uh, let's open the PR. Sure. Yes, oh. uh, and uh, here uh, you suggest uh, to uh, use uh, GRPC uh, convention. Oh, 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 oh. parameters. Oh, yes. Yes, okay. and uh, <clears throat> I have implemented uh, this for uh, the service six. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Um, 
apologies for being so slow this morning. Yeah, because it, it, that 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 does help a great deal because otherwise you wind up with very complicated stanzas of things. So, um, and and if memory serves, yeah. So I mean that, that that's a fairly common convention. So okay, that that explains the SRV six. Um, and the VXLAN and the remote mechanism. And I'll go ahead and take a look at those today. Um, and then you had some news on the um, core DNS, the fan out plugin stuff, Denise. I know we, we talked a little bit about this, but it's probably better to talk about it in the broader community a bit. Oh, yes. Um, in short, uh, core DNS guys uh, suggested uh, using forward plugin with Zonus uh, handling instead of a funnel plugin. Uh, this way uh, looks, uh, uh, looks good for us. And it also can uh, simplify our uh, NSM specific uh, part uh, of DNS. And I have prepared PR for this. Uh, and uh, it's not partial CI yet, but I'll uh, work on this. Yeah. So basically, um, did did we still have some uh, use case uh, for using FN out? Oh, it's okay to use a forwarder for now. Oh, uh, actually, if uh, the user uh, can uh, correctly configure uh, his DNS configs, in this case, a uh, forward plugin will work fine. Uh, but uh, we could uh, face some um, problems with uh, uh, we can face the problems with uh, recursive servers. Uh, but uh, I actually can't uh, uh, find any case uh, where the forward plugin with uh, Zonus handling uh, will not uh, work as expected. Yeah, it, it's effectively this was a suggestion that came out of the discussion with the core DNS folks. And they basically said, look, you know, we, we sort of described what we were trying to do, what we were trying to do. And they said, hey, you know, you can just, if you've got mutually ignorant DNS servers, um, you can use the zones. Um, so that if I come in with a network service and I say, look, I'm providing DNS for foo.example.com um, in the DNS context, then we can simply put a record in for foo.example.com and do our look up there. Um, and the, you know, th this gives us, I think, about as good as we're going to get. <coughs> we still have the, um, the underlying problem that, um, you know, if people are doing split DNS, um, then you, they may be representing for the same domain name, different IPs internally and externally. Um, but that's going to be a problem no matter what we do. So. Oh, yes, you're right. Uh, I can um, suggest uh, some solution by Slack uh, after the meeting, if you don't. Mind. Oh, that would be very interesting. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, and then there was a comment here, Denise, about cross-connect servers sending empty statistics for metrics. This was open. Oh, bit. yes. Uh, we had a merged PR related to switch uh, metrics service to stats polling service from VPP. Mm -hmm. And uh, looks like the problem is solved. And I uh, asked Ivana to check this. Cool. Yeah, I also could confirm uh, by test. Uh, but uh, polling service is working fine. Perfect. That's good news. Uh, is, is Ivana, I don't think we have Ivana on the call today. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, it would be good if you could take a look and see if that's been resolved. My, my general rule of thumb is I prefer possible to get confirmation from the person who opened the bug that in fact we have fixed yeah. their problem because I'm sure we've all been there where you, you did your level best and you thought you fixed it and everyone agreed that you fixed it and you hadn't even vaguely fixed it. Um, so, um, okay. Uh, and then add option to break tests after several test fails. This was a cloud test. I think, 
Uh, I've applied all suggestions and uh, now I'm waiting my reviewers to approve. Ah, this, uh, okay. Cool. Excellent. I am the last person who can give a being a little bit late on the review. Cool. All right. Um, so uh, in progress. So this is another one that you'd open up the news. Uh, ping by hosting cannot be success for chain tests. Oh, this uh, is a simple problem uh, which uh, was uh, found by uh, test and SM suits. Mm -hmm. uh, I found that uh, uh, some chain uh, can uh, make uh, uh, <coughs> pink uh, is not su success. Uh, I have uh, added st steps to reproduce. Uh, Okay. Uh, oh, can you open uh, the issue? <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks simple, but uh, as we discussed internally, it's some uh, happening inside a VPP and pink is not going. Okay, so uh, for the creative interfaces with no errors, but pink should be successful for client endpoints. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm not quite following, other than the fact that ping is not going for through. Is the, how is this related to the host name, pinging by host name? Oh, it's a uh, test uh, related to DNS. Uh, uh -huh. We're just uh, using DNS and uh, tries uh, ping NSE by uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> host name. <laughs> uh, in in the test, NSE just uh, have uh, some DNS config for this uh, specific name host, and uh, we just uh, tr trying uh, ping uh, NSE by uh, its uh, host name. Okay. Um, and uh, he, here uh, uh, we face a problem that uh, with uh, uh, chain tests in suits, uh, it uh, can fail on CI. And uh, I just uh, uh, add, added issue for this. <clears throat> okay. So I guess the question is, is the problem with DNS resolution or is the problem with... The well, I, I think it's related to VPP. Uh, I just uh, quickly look it into logs and I found that uh, that forwarder has uh, very huge logs. And I think uh, we need to in investigate this uh, problem. Okay. Yes, I, I have attached uh, the logs uh, Okay. So it's I mostly think, uh, all related to switching to suits uh, for integration tests when we reuse the same forwarder and same network service manager and we okay. come to issues like this. Okay, okay, that's, that's starting to make a bit more sense then. Okay, that makes more sense then. Okay, so you're, you're currently digging into it then, correct? Oh, that, yes. Okay. Um, adding Go leak for checking Go routines on the CI. Um, this seems like an. Uh, I've added Go leak to chain element tests, and uh, it shows that there are leaks in uh, Hill client and the monitor client. And now I'm trying to figure out how to analyze properly this test without leaks. You can see logs on CI. Yep, okay, so this, this is... <clears throat> so I think overall this is, you know, checking for, for 
leaks is definitely a good thing. So you're saying heal and monitor are leaking. Um, found unexpected go routines leaking after the tests. So it's possible that what's going on here is that we, the tests are not properly um, providing the right close thing. Because I know that, that one of the things that, that Ilya did was he switched over to at least heal, and I think perhaps also monitor, um, having a chain level context uh, that you could cancel in order to cause the uh, event, the various go routines to quit. So you may want to take a look and see if, in fact, the tests themselves are are closing that con are canceling that context at the end. Mm -hmm. That might be the source of the leak. Yeah, yeah, it's probably. Okay. But no, I, I think adding go go leaks is a is a wonderful thing because if we we're wanting to run long term. We definitely don't want to be leaking go routines. Okay. So the command network service manager application and testing stuff. I saw that going by. Um, Mostly by Alexandra. He's on PTO, unfortunately, today. And okay. I plan to have him. So the general idea is to uh, have network service manager based on a new SDK chain elements. Yep. And uh, add the required child elements to SDK. Yep. No, I think that's a good idea. Um, I, I do have a question for guys, for you guys, and this is this is more than anything, um, sort of like trying to sort out whether or not I'm making things too hard. You you would look to calling this command dash network service manager, which is a perfectly fine name. Um, I have been thinking about calling it command dash case dot net dash network service manager because it's Kubernetes related. I don't know if that that would be overcomplicated naming or whether or not it communicates something useful or valuable. Um, so, like input on that would be super welcome from my side. Yeah, actually, we can choose uh, any name. If you have some document describing a naming policy for all of these applications, so it's a good time to yep. choose a better names. But uh, traditionally, the network service manager pod contains three pods, uh, three containers. Sorry. Yeah, it's equivalent to current NSMD uh, container. And so it's independent from a Kubernetes. Kubernetes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's it's a w application independent from a Kubernetes. Okay, so I mean we can we can definitely sort that out. Um, I, I know, for example, well, but the, the way I've been thinking about it, quite frankly, is um, it, it actually doesn't make any sense. It, it turns out that we make our life incredibly hard and painful by pulling out the network service manager device plugin into a separate uh, separate container. That, that just makes life really hard for no good reason. So when doing this, I was thinking of actually just having it expose the device plugin piece directly from the network service manager command, because there's literally no point in pulling it apart separately. Um, and then- But uh, Ed, uh, I think we discussed it before already. Uh, we need a device plugin only if we want to have a workspace with a Mimif and so on and then point mostly. So probably we could do the same way as a Kubernetes do and have just one single socket uh, no, but for an NS NSM and... How, so, so I would love to get to something like that. The, the, the tricky problem is how do I get the... Re so the, on the one side, you've got one socket where the network service manager is listening, right? Yeah. Um, on the other side, <clears throat> you need to also have a socket where the NSE is listening. Yeah, but for Kubernetes, we also need the same way. So we can just create some file inside the folder mounted to both of us and provide it to NS manager. So it could connect to NSE yeah. with this socket okay. file. But, but again, how do you how do you get there? The, the, the tricky problem you run into is that um, if you want to get per pod directories to put this socket file in, <clears throat> then you need to have some way of getting those per pod, per uh, NSC. Ed, I think we could just have one folder because we have a security right now. It's not a problem with managing uh, connection restrictions to mm -hmm. these socket files. 
So if we have one folder, then um, effectively one, if you have one folder, then that means that, for example, a rogue pod can mount a denial of service against an NSC that may not be prepared for it, for example, right? Effectively, if you have, a, if you look at the way that all the Kubernetes things are doing this, either A, you're only ever talking northbound, right? So you're only ever having somebody talk to the one socket, for example, when you're talking to Kubernetes API locally, or you know, for the, 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 the API server, or you are having um, the situation where in, if you look at uh, the resource device, the, the device plugin stuff, you end up registering a socket um, going back via the device plugin. So you basically have a registration call where you say, this is my socket. Um, that you go and deal with this. So I, I definitely want to investigate seeing if we can get to this place. I guess the, the point is I'm, I'm not seeing 100% how we get there yet. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm. I, don't, I don't think we have any problems here actually during our experiments. Yeah, so I guess I would, I would like to know how we are getting per pod mounts done so that we don't have pods cross talking to each other um, without device plugin. Uh, in, in our uh, internal discussions, it was about mounting two folders, one for uh, NSM server socket and one shared folders for any of the uh, NSEs to put the yeah. NSC client socket inside it. The second one that worries me very badly um, because there, that, that folder opens up a huge set of potential security issues. Right, so just- mm, Only with sockets for just, NSC, it will be just, uh, just to give you, servers with SSL. Right, but just, just think, let me just give you a very, very straightforward example, right? So you are pod one, you lead on a client socket in that, that folder. I am pod mm -hmm. two, I am a nefarious pod. I delete your file socket and replace it with my own. Now you have gone and registered, you know, the fact that you actually have this, um, this network service you're providing, but I have now subbed myself in to receive the calls to you because I can literally- Okay, okay, okay. If you, uh, it's allowed it to delete, yeah, it could be a problem. Yeah, so I mean, there's, there's a, I mean, we can potentially look around and see if people have found other good ways of solving this, but the, the, the sort of very naive of saying we'll have, way of saying we'll have one folder for all the clients to have their sockets um, has a real potential to have issues, um, you know, in terms of have issues with security. Um, because again, you can, you can literally go and catch other people's messages and receive other people's calls and prevent people from being able to reach the legitimate network service endpoint there. Yeah, okay. Okay, we will discuss if it looks under. Yeah. Um, so, but no, I mean, they're, 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 I, I understand exactly what you're trying to get rid of there. It would be great. And maybe there is a smarter idea out there, but I don't think it's as simple as just have a separate folder for the clients to drop their sockets in and have all the clients. Yeah, we discussed a few variants actually. Uh, probably the most good will be to have uh, endpoints to be served on a TCP socket, any of the TCP socket available on a node. So NS manager will connect using a TCP. It's the safest way, I think. Yeah, the, the, and again, the, the one thing I want to think through there is that it, it actively precludes us doing any kind of CNI intercept. Uh, because now we cannot function independent of the CNI. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, I, I actually actively encourage trying to see if we can figure out something smarter in this direction, because I think that would be wonderful. Um, there's just yeah, several yeah. I want to make sure that we deal with here, because it would actually make me greatly happy um, to move away, to, to move to something quite a bit simpler. So. Yeah, okay. Cool. All right. Um, you know, and, and in fact, actually, it, one of the things that we can do that, that's basically very, very cheap along the way for this that I have been doing 
is in a lot of the places where we have been basically using socket files, um, I've been using URLs with the Unix URL. Because then in, if, when we do get to the point where we figured out a way that doesn't involve socket files, um, we don't have nearly as much recoding to do because we've got a mechanism that's generic to it. Cool. Um, awesome. Uh, let's see. WireGuard remote support for um, BPP agent forwarder. How is that going, Denise? Um, here we face it that VPP is is uh, in is compatible with uh, uh, WireGuard because of uh, I've packet works on layer two. Uh, uh, WireGuard works uh, on layer three, uh, and at this moment I trying to add to uh, I've packet a possible to work as a three, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, at this moment moment uh, I'm I not face it with uh, problems yet okay. uh, with this way uh, and uh, I'll let you know about any updates that, that, would, be, that would be awesome because in a brief glance that I did through it looked like AF packet probably could do the right thing if you just if, if in fact the AF packet plugin for VPP was coded to do the right thing it's just the guys who had done it had only been thinking in terms of the ETH pairs and so they sort of coded it to do the L2 thing so it, it, it seemed possible, uh, you know, potentially possible, but I'm glad you're digging into it. Um, we're riding up against the edge of the um, hour. Um, shall we all go jump on the community meeting? Yep. All right. Talk to you later. Yep. See you.